Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial on mastering the film strip filter options in Lightroom. In this video tutorial, we're going to look at the film strip filtering options in Lightroom and just make sense of what it is that we're seeing here. Now, this is the film strip across the bottom of the screen, and I have selected a folder of images here that I shot in London. So here is the folder of images that we're working with. There are 494 images in that folder, and you can see here it says 494, and there is one currently selected. Now the important thing to know is that this is the film strip here at the bottom of the screen, and I can hide that. But you'll see here that there's also a set of icons that looks very similar to the ones that we're seeing in the film strip over here, and they're actually on a toolbar. So this is a toolbar, and I can hide it by pressing the letter T. Press the letter T to show the toolbar again. Now the icons here are very different to these here. What these are is I want to add this to my image. So if I click on this image and I want to make it a green color, then I would click on this icon here to make that a green color image. Or I could flag it, either a pick flag or a reject flag, or I could go ahead and give the image a star rating. So these are the add this to my image options. And if you don't see all of them, then you would just click this down pointing arrow at the end of this toolbar, and then just make sure that you have rating, flagging, and color label all selected. On a laptop, you may choose to show a few less than that. If you don't have a lot of room and if you never use color tags, then you could take color away from that toolbar. But just a reminder that this is a toolbar that you can press T to show it, and the toolbar contains options for actually adding things to your images. But once you've added them to your images, the question now becomes, how can I filter my images on the things that I've added to them? Well, we do that using the filter bar here that runs above the film strip. There's also another way of doing it that we'll look at in another video. Right now, we're just looking at these film strip options. Now, the filter tools are over here, and if you don't see them, if you don't see those little icons, then just click on the word filter, and that shows all the available filters. And these are flag filters, star rating filters, and color filters. We're going to look at each of them in turn, as well as this box here. We're actually going to start with the colors because they're perhaps a little easier to understand than anything else. So I'm going to click on red here because I want to see the images that I have flagged with the red color. Well, these are the images that are red color images. If I want to turn that off, I can just click to turn off that flag and I go back to viewing all my images. You can see here it says no filter. In other words, I'm looking at every single image in this particular folder. Let's have a look and see. I also have some green flagged images. So here these have the green color label associated with them. An image can have only one color label associated with it. So if they're green, we know necessarily that they're not red or yellow or blue or purple and so on. But look here on this selector. I can also select red. So we can say to Lightroom, I want to see all the images that have either the red or the green color associated with them. And what red or green means is not up to you. That's the topic of another video. But right now, if you're using color ratings here, then you can see different colors. You can see red and green at the same time. And you can see that they're selected here. So if we want to go back to seeing just red, we'll turn off green. And so now we're just seeing red. And now we'll turn off red. And by turning off red, we'll see everything in that folder. Next, let's look at star rating. And here are our star ratings. Now, I only ever use one to three. So four and five are meaningless to me. But let's have a look and see what happens when I click on three. Well, by default, we're looking at rating is greater than or equal to three. And since I don't use four and five, these are the images that I have flagged as three star images, greater than or equal to. Let's click on two stars here. And now we're seeing the two stars or greater. So we're seeing two and three stars. And we're seeing that because of this symbol here. It's the mathematical symbol for greater than or equal to. But what if we only wanted to see the two star image and not the three stars? Well, I'll click on this. There's no indication that this is actually a clickable icon, but it is. So I'm just going to click on it and I could choose rating is equal to. And now we're seeing the only image in this collection, which is a two star image. 
we want to go back to seeing all the images, then we're just going to click back on this two star and that turns everything off. And now we're going back to all the images. And to make sure that everything is set back as it should be, I'm going to select rating is greater than or equal to. So that next time I go to select one of these, I'm going to see exactly what I would expect by default to see. So when I click on one star, we're seeing one star and higher. Now this is also a sort of active selection. So let's just go to rating as equal to. So I'm seeing all my one star images. And let's say, for example, I'm going to click on this one and I'm actually going to say this is actually a two star. So I'm going to press the number two. And when I do, you can see it disappears. And the reason why it disappears is it's no longer a one star image. And I already asked just to see the one star images. So it's disappeared because it's not one star because we made it two. Of course, if we're looking at rating is greater than or equal to, then we're going to see it again because it is greater than or equal to one, it's two. So the last selector here that we're going to spend some time looking at is this flag selector. And this is cumulative as well. And I think it's pretty confusing until you really understand what's happening here. Let's go to this rightmost icon here. And this says it's going to filter based on any flag status. In fact, when I click on it, I'm going to see the rejected photos. Click again, and I'll go back to seeing all my photos. Now let's go here and we're going to filter this time on no flag at all. In other words, these are the images that are not either pick or rejected. They're unflagged. Click on this again and we'll go back to seeing all the images in our particular folder. And the final one is the pick flag. So let's click here. And these are all the ones that have pick flags associated with them. You can see they've all got little white flags in the corner. That's a pick flag. So what if we want to see pick and rejected? Well, we can because this is cumulative. So here are our pick flags. Let's go here and click on the rejected. And now we're seeing flagged and rejected photos. Rejected, flagged, flagged, rejected, and so on. And if we want to go back to seeing all the images in that particular folder, we could click on these icons to deselect them. But let's just go and select them again. It's also possible to come to this menu here and select Filters Off. If ever you're seeing in a particular folder less than the number of images you think you should be seeing, check down here. And if it says anything other than Filters Off, then open up this menu and just choose Filters Off. Now you'll see that there's a lot of things here in this list. And some of them make sense and some of them don't. It's probably better if you don't use these options. But if you want to, let's just see what's happening. When I click on Small Aperture, I'm actually going to see any images that were shot with a small aperture on the camera. Let's just see the information for this shot. And the aperture here is 8.0. And if we go forward, then the aperture on each of these is going to be quite small. This is preset as a filter, but you can see that it's not exactly helpful because there's nothing here for large apertures. So we can't easily select to see large aperture. And when we go to exposure information, well, we're not actually seeing anything anyway. So this is not really a particularly helpful setting. So I would suggest that if you want to see more detail about your images, that we find a different way to do that. And to do that, we will probably use the filter bar. And we'll have a look at the filter bar that runs across the top of the screen in another video at another time. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks, and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, and a whole lot more.